This very important law enforcement officer training video is being brought to you by Star and Shield Group, dedicated to the public safety community and their families. What you need to know about the Sovereign Citizen Movement. I'm Sadie Darnell, Sheriff of Alachua County. This video is being produced by the Florida Sheriff's Association and the U.S. Attorney's Office to raise awareness for law enforcement regarding the Sovereign Citizen Movement and how they may impact us. Sovereign Citizen is a catch-all phrase used to describe a variety of anti-government groups and individuals who share a common belief that our United States government, including our court system and law enforcement, is a fraud and they are exempt from our authority. Now to Georgia, where the streets outside a county courthouse were quiet again after a bloody shootout on its steps. Just before lunch, this was the sound of the gunfight outside the Forsyth County Courthouse north of Atlanta, recorded on a cell phone by an eyewitness. Police say that Dennis Marks, a self-described anti-government sovereign citizen, was behind the wheel of this silver SUV, carrying an assault rifle, tear gas, pepper spray, two handguns, a bomb, and flex ties that he planned to use to restrain people. Marks was part of an underground movement that believes its members don't have to follow the law. The government calls them domestic terrorists. They publicly reject violence, but members have had shootouts with police before. I'm Pamela Marsh, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Northern District of Florida. There have been numerous encounters by law enforcement with sovereign citizens across the nation and right here in the state of Florida. We've seen sovereign citizens who've created their own driver's license and vehicle tags. They've filed million-dollar false liens against government officials and law enforcement officials. They may challenge the validity of our state and national laws. Sovereign citizens may tell you that you have no authority over them and that they are not within your jurisdiction, but that is simply not true. It's our hope that through this training video, you will learn more about what sovereign citizens believe and that most of all, it will help keep you safe. Known as sovereign citizens, people who do not believe that many of the basic laws of this country apply to them. I'm not an American citizen. I do not recognize these. I am my counsel. They have disrupted courtrooms, led police on high-speed chases, and even engaged in murderous shootouts with authorities. Oh my God! There are an estimated 300,000 sovereign citizens in America. The FBI classifies them as a domestic terrorist movement. Many of these people followed a scary progression from passionate but peaceful to ultra-violent. A sovereign is an individual that interprets the Constitution of the United States differently. Sovereigns believe essentially that the United States government is not a legitimate government, but is a corporation. So they will not have a driver's license, a vehicle registration, an insurance card, or anything in which there is some type of implicit contract, verbal or nonverbal contract, in which the United States government can hold sway over them as a slave. Sovereigns believe in, in two different things, that each of us are two distinct individuals. We are our free man, which is our flesh and blood, our human aspect, and we're our straw man. And that straw man is that corporate uh, slave, if you will, to the United States corporate government. Ah, the government. It loves you and wants to keep you safe and well. It even wants to make paying taxes, fines, and court costs easier for you. How? Well, you'll need to meet your straw man. He was born the same day you were. He looks like you, has the same name, and lives in your house, but you never knew he existed. You will have even paid his parking tickets or taxes. The worst part? He's been dead from day one. From every birth certificate, a legal personality, or legal fiction, is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So, there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it, all spun from Black's Law Dictionary. For example, 
When the police say, do you understand? You'll say, yes. What they are really saying is, do you stand under our authority? Oops, a daisy. You just created a verbal contract with them. Oh, you clever government. The rhetoric of a sovereign is very important from an officer safety standpoint. You'll hear a lot that I'm a free man of the land. I am then protected shush, by the shush. land. Shush. Don't tell me to shut up. I, I am, am the living natural man and my voice will be heard. They will ask you, what is the reason for stopping me? I'm going to ask you again, what am I being pulled over for? What am I being stopped for? Am I being detained? You have, I am traveling. I am not driving. I do not have to provide a driver's license because I am a sovereign. All right, stay seated, Scott. Do you have a license on you? I do not submit do to not? unlawful inquiry, sir. Okay, so I you have, don't have a driver's license? I have a right to travel unencumbered freely. Uh, you do not have jurisdiction over me. Uh, are you a peace officer or a police officer? There's a difference in the sovereign rhetoric. I also need to know uh, if you're a peace, a, a constitutional common law peace officer, or are you a police officer? Because there is a difference. Some sovereigns will ask you to fill out a paperwork explaining your jurisdiction over them. Uh, some will be argumentative, but the argument that you will get most is that you have, as a law enforcement officer, you have no jurisdiction over them. And they will constantly repeat that. Their objective is to confuse you. You don't know their level of commitment. If they are providing this, this information to, in order to confuse you or in order to distract you to the point where they can take advantage of you and assault you or kill you. May the 20th, 2010 started out like any other day. Two veterans of our West Memphis, Arkansas Police Department, Bill Evans and Brandon Powder, were patrolling the interstate as part of the department's drug and addiction team, something they loved to do. They became involved in what seemed to be a routine traffic stop, though I've always warned my officers there is no such thing. But really, how much more routine can you get than pulling over a father and son in what looked like a church bus? My men didn't realize who or what they were dealing with. Neither officer made it home and one of them was my son. I'm Bob Powder, Chief of the West Memphis Police Department. My officers, Bill and my son Brandon, didn't realize that there are people at war with this country that are not international terrorists. They are seemingly ordinary people, just like you and me, but they don't recognize the federal government's authority to impose laws or taxes on them. They're known as sovereign citizens, their beliefs may sound so out there that they appear comical or crazy, but don't discount or ignore these people because they are willing to kill and be killed for these beliefs. We as law enforcement officers need to recognize this very real threat so we can protect ourselves. And maybe if Brandon and Bill had been able to recognize the warning signs of sovereign beliefs, they'd be alive today. Indicators from an officer safety standpoint is there are indicators on the vehicle itself. It could be bumper stickers. It could be a specific type of homemade license plate. They will not have legitimate driver's licenses or vehicle registrations. However, they will have homemade licenses or registration which furthers their cause. There's three types of sovereign categories in which we, we see regularly constitutional sovereigns, religious sovereigns, which believe the only law they have to follow is God's law, and diplomatic sovereigns, which believe that they are diplomats or citizens of another country or Native American or Aboriginal to the United States, therefore not subject to United States law. From a law enforcement standpoint, if a law enforcement officer has an encounter that someone is claiming to be a sovereign citizen, it is very important to have a plan and what we suggest is when you identify someone as a sovereign, either through their rhetoric, through their paperwork, or through some other type of means, 
is you automatically disconnect and call for a backup officer and for a supervisor. Have a plan when it comes to dealing with a sovereign. Document the incident through a report, through a field contact. Document the incident and then share that information with your agency, with other surrounding agencies. And if you engage in a verbal confrontation with them, rest assured they're most likely videotaping it. And then they will use that as propaganda to discredit you as an officer, to discredit your agency, and to further their sovereign beliefs and cause. Well, I, I just asked you for your license, well, your and registration, and your proof of insurance. Okay. I'm going to tell you, you're being video recorded and audio recorded. So are you. Oh, well, good. Do not get distracted by their verbiage, by their rhetoric, by their onslaught of paperwork or language that they're giving you. When they come into the courts, usually they have lots of paperwork uh, that's hard to decipher. It takes a lot of time with our staff uh, to try to decipher what it is they're trying to file. And then in their case files, they're usually very voluminous. Uh, they take a lot of time. And in the courts, they can be belligerent. Uh, sometimes they don't want to stand up when the judge comes into the courtroom. And they're always representing themselves in the court. So you can see it does have a huge, huge impact on the courts, you know, on a statewide basis. In one county in the Northern District of Florida, an individual turned violent when law enforcement went to execute a warrant at his home. Sheriff's offices are often targeted by sovereign citizen groups because we're in charge of the courts and we run both the civil and criminal process serving. When a sovereign citizen presents you either false identification or invalid documents, you need to advise them that it's not recognized by the sheriff or the court and then take no action on it. But be very cautious of how you approach them and what you say to them because you can leave your agency open for liability. It's not gone away. It, it increases in membership and beliefs with the conspiracy, government conspiracy aspects, with the internet, with the communication aspects, is, it's, it's increased. You were born free, now you can live free. You always have the option to reject their governance and therefore escape tyranny. Because it's your life and the power is really in the people. It's increased. Uh, here in Orange County is we probably document a new sovereign at least once a week. And uh, you can ask uh, Sheriff Judd in Polk County. He, he has many, many sovereigns. Uh, and virtually any sheriff, any police department in the state of Florida has had an encounter with someone claiming to be a sovereign uh, or uh, a sovereign belief. There are groups of individuals uh, who believe that the United States government uh, is something that they do not have to abide by and something that they will actively resist. What you need to know about the Sovereign Citizen Movement. Hello, I'm Steve Casey. I'm the Executive Director of the Florida Sheriff's Association. I also serve as the Chair of the National Sheriff's Association Committee of State Sheriff's Associations. This video was developed in concert with our partners at the city, county, state, and national level in order to increase officer awareness of the radical anti-government group known as Sovereign Citizens, which pose a real risk to officer safety and security. I want to thank all of those who have participated in the development of this video and encourage officers to share this information widely as your partner's life may depend upon it. I want to thank you for your service to your community your state, and our nation. Brought to you by Star and Shield Group, dedicated to the public safety community and their families.